Tony Catello, Dave Gleckner, Windale Sports, ALE Futures. You know where to find us, WindaleSports.com. Give me a follow at Ticatello23. Follow Dave at D-G-L-O-E-C-K on Twitter. And we've been doing these videos, whether it be Roto Strategies, whether it be DFS Gems. We talked NLE, so now it's ALEs, Dave. ALEs Futures, and it's a power pack division. Always been one of, if not the best division in baseball for a very, very long time. But right off the bat, before we even get to the betting odds, what 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 strikes you right off the bat for the AL East? Well, I, I think the Yankees do have the best roster up and down, but mainly because they have the best pitching staff. But now that it's been kind of shaken up a little bit with the Rodone injury and, and the uncertainty there. So I think with them healthy, they're going to be tough. But then I look at the other teams. Listen, the Red Sox are doing something a lot different than you know we expected with a big spending team. They're really trying to tool with veterans. And, and even reaching out to Japan and adding an outfielder there, uh, I think they're going to be an interesting team that is very hard to really predict how they're going to mesh together. And then, as always, you have the Rays that are just so fundamentally sound and have a guy, Tyler Glass, now that could come back you know, late April, early May, shake things up. And then from the Blue Jays' perspective, their biggest problem last year to me, and I think to a lot of people out there, was their defense. And they really shook it up and played uh, and, and changed some things, getting T. Oscar Hernandez out there, bringing Kiermaier, trying to shore up that middle uh, defense because they're good hitting. They're, they're tremendous hitting, but they need to field the ball. And then your sleeper, the one that you love, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I love them too, but I still think they're a year or two away, the Orioles. It'll be interesting to see how they – that young team, you know, you need to get – Rushman going, and you've got Gunnar Henderson going, and those rookies need to really – rookies, I say, tongue-in-cheek, but those young players really need to be a stepping stone for the future of them. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, number one, the defense in Toronto, right? You talked about Kiermaier, very defensively sound. Dalton Varsho comes in, very defensively sound, right? Uh, I love Baltimore. I love what they're doing. I, I don't think they have enough. It could be a nice sleeper team to make noise. Uh, but I think they're all a year away. I, I don't know if the pitching holds up. That's but I, I found this real fast, Dave. I, I think it's pretty interesting. It says Aaron Judge, Vlad Guerrero, George Springer, Bo Pichette, Rafael Devers, Ali Rutschman, and Wander Franco are among the top 18 candidates in the odds to win AL MVP all in one division, Dave. Yeah. All in one division. No, it's it's stacked. I mean, if you look at it, you know, out West, it's Astros. And then you could argue maybe Mariners, maybe Rangers or Angels make a surprise. A's are out. Um, in the Central, they're all just like mediocre. This is the the heavy hitter that could get three teams for sure. And, and I think they will. I really think they're going to get three teams in this playoffs. So let's go right from the bottom. Right now, as we're going live right now, we just talked about the young team, Baltimore Orioles, plus 2,500. I mean, listen, you know, you have those in the Rays, or, or, or the Red Sox, are at plus 1,500 for the Red Sox, plus 2,500 uh, for Baltimore. Do you see anything? I mean, listen, we all know anything can happen, right? But is, is there any possible way that one of these two teams can actually take the LL East? No. No, there's, there's <laughs> not. But is there a chance that one could really – you know, turn it on and make a surprise to pop up in that third spot in the division and potentially get into the last wild card. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Anything can happen. And, and you know, a lot of my numbers looking at here in the charts, they're not that far off from these teams. They're, they're projected, you know, Boston, what are they? Seven, eight and a half. Some of my projections see them on the side of 84, 84 might get you know, not get you all the way, but you, you tack on two or three more 87, 88 might get you in. So, I think the Red Sox could be a sneaky team. As for the Orioles, a lot's got to go their way this year. I have them more in the high 70s. But, um, again, you know, things, if some teams fall apart up top, could they get there? Yes. But right now I do have the Orioles in last place. But I think they're a fighter. I think they're coming up. The problem is the pitching. And I think we all know this. Kyle Gibson is one of the projected stars. They just don't have much from the, from the pitching perspective. I think that's going to hurt them long term. Even the bullpen is pretty weak. Yeah, you know, I agree. I I do. I agree. But you're what you're wearing that 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 awesome Tampa Bay hat, which I, I love the TV, man. Um, you just talked about they were really, really set on glass now. Uh, being their, their very very good number two starter, unfortunately he gets the injury. Looks like he could be back late April, mid May. Uh, you know, whatever. He just turns thirty this year, so he's in that twenty eight to thirty two year old prime, like us in Philadelphia with like Zach Wheeler. You see that that next level. 
number one, do they have the pitch? And number two, is Wander Franco going to be an MVP this year? Yeah, I love Wander. And, and Wander's biggest problem has been his his health, right? His ability to play. He's just been banged up in his two first two full seasons in the MLB. You know, a healthy season of Wander, and, and he's down on many fancy baseball lists. A healthy season from Wander, he's projected as a 5.2 war, which puts him in the top 10% of players in all Major League Baseball. So I really like Wander. I think he, you know, as long as he's out there, I see him potentially win the batting title this year. I see Tampa, the lineup is tough. Um, they're, they're a team, the problem with Tampa is they score one of the least amount of runs on home runs. And we know what has happened in baseball lately. Home runs rule. Uh, they got to find a little more pop in that lineup and a healthy Wander and a healthy Randy or Rosarena and even a return of Brandon Lau. Uh, I think will really help that. And then on the pitching side, you mentioned Glasnow. Yes, the injury hurts, but I think he's got a chance to come back. He, he did pitch at the end of last year. If you remember, he pitched in the playoffs against the Guardians. But with McClanahan, Rasmussen Springs, and now Eflin, it's a decent rotation. It is. I, I and, and you remember, uh, make sure you're following us at windowsports.com. Make sure you're watching me and Dave, too, every Sunday morning uh, on Sirius Channel 87 XM, 7 to 9 a.m. And we brought this up. We talked about Zach Eflin, right? That Zach Eflin signs a three-year deal. And, I, again, if he can stay healthy, if he can stay healthy, he could be a pretty damn good pitcher out there. Uh, there's no reason why he can't win 12 games. Uh, so be, be very, very, you know, mindful of that. Now. They're plus 340, Dave. Uh, you know, uh, any in your mind, plus 340, they have a chance to take the top spot. They absolutely do. And they have better than a 3.4 to 1 chance to win that division. They're tough. They have the Yankees number. They beat the Yankees in the season series almost every year. And, you know, we've already talked about some of the injuries and the Blue Jays even just, you know, having to mesh together. Um, and, and especially from a pitching perspective, we'll get to them in a second. I think there's value on the Tampa Bay Rays to win the division at, you know, Plus 340. I really do. No, I, I like that too. I, I think there's value there. Like you said, they they hold the cards uh you know close to the chest all the time, but they have the number of the Yankees every single year. But speaking of the Blue Jays plus 205, we talked about it already. They transformed the outfield, will be better. Uh, you know, listen, they they made the playoffs last year. Uh, but again, you know, Vladimir Guerrero wasn't the same guy. I mean, I remember coming on multiple shows saying Vlad's going to hit 50 plus easy this year. And he had a very, very down year in his standards. Uh, you know, will he be back this year? And and will this pitching staff be enough to take the AL East? Yeah. So we talked about Wander Franco with a projected 5.2 war. Highest war on the Blue Jays is Matt Chapman at 4.7. So that just tells you that Vladimir there is second 4.6. So there's still some doubts. And war factors in some other things as far as, you know, fielding goes, obviously, and base running. But to that matter, um, they're going to need him to return to 2021 status. And um, I'm not sure he's going to get all the way back there. And I, I think they still have some concern. Like, for me, I'm not sure what they're doing at second base. I mean, they thought Biggio was going to be the guy. Biggio didn't work out. And there's Whit Murrayfield when they brought him over. He, he just hasn't been as good. So... They're a good hitting team, but I just think they rely too much on the home run. And as we go to pitching, I like that they added Chris Bassett. I think that helps them out tremendously in the rotation. I love Gossman. Manoa is very good. So adding him and Barrios, I think, will have a return year, a bounce back year. So I think where they're stronger is in the pitching game. So I think they're going to be better in pitching. And I think they're a strong contender to make the playoffs. I and mean, I think they will make the playoffs. Yeah, I do too. I definitely do. Uh, I, I love me some Alec Manoa too, man. I got, I got, I, I, I love the cockiness. I love the swag. Ooh, Manoa. I, yeah, I love, oh, I, I love, love him. Manoa. Love man. him. Yeah, I do. He, but he, then you get that in the defense. He, he's right? a Philly guy, bro. Like yeah, you can put yeah, him in yeah. the Philly. He's a Philly guy, man. Like you know. So yeah, I, I, I like that plus two hundred five right now. But listen, the Yankees are plus one twenty five. And listen, it's all about Aaron Judge. It's all about the pitch. Stay. Aaron Judge, Dave, he signs a nine-year, $360 million contract. Uh, will he hit 62 home runs again this year? No. Um, you know, that free agent deal did something special for him. And him rejecting a contract and betting on himself, you know, got him that money that you just referenced. So I don't think he gets to 62 again. We haven't seen 62 since back in that 2000 era, early 2000s with Bond, Sosa, and McGuire. So. It was amazing. It was great. And it's possible. But, you know, pitchers are going to pitch around them. And I think rightfully so. They brought in Bader. Bader's out for a couple of weeks now. 
so, you know, some of these guys, you know, getting along in the tooth with Rizzo, uh, Stanton even is, is grown a little bit older. What protects Judge? I'm not so sure. Josh Donaldson, no. So I think pitchers can pitch around. I don't think we see 62 again. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be honest with you here. You know, uh, just looking at this as a whole, right? You you mentioned earlier about the Rodon injury, right? So what stinks, right? Yeah. Um, so, so you also mentioned a good point. You know, when guys bet on themselves and they get the payday, will that be a guy to take his foot off the gas a little bit? Will he be relaxed? And and on top of that, Giancarlo Stan is never a guy who's going to stay healthy, nope. right? Josh Allen's not a guy going to stay healthy. I mean, so, so you look at this team, there's a lot of question marks, and the bullpen isn't even that good. So... You know, I don't think they're as dominant as everybody thinks. And I think that's why, like we just mentioned, that the good value is on the Rays at plus 340 and even the Blue Jays at plus 205. I agree. I agree. And the Yankees are, are a hell of a team, but they're a team that I think can get caught this year. Um, I just think there's a lot circling around. And there's not a lot of – you know, the way the Yankees will win this division is if they put more trust in their youngsters – I really like Volpe. I like Barraza. I like some of their other guys, but they're not going to get spots in this team yet. And they're going to have, they're relying on the older guys. When they decide that they want to give those guys the chance, I think they have more potential. But until that comes, I think the Blue Jays and Rays will be in it all year. Uh, I agree. I agree. All right, Dave, final question. Who's winning the AL East? Toronto Blue Jays. I'm I just you. think they have the best and deepest pitching staff. And I would argue that they're right there with the Yankees in offense. I agree. There it is, plus 205. Value plus 340 for the Tampa Bay. I'm Tony. This is Dave, AL Futures, WindDailySports.com. Make sure you subscribe. Keep it locked here for more futures, for more props, and all season long for all our good baseball content.